over the last 15 years, uh, we've shipped uh, way above over a million copies of that product. In fact, uh, we ship close to 200 million units every year, primarily through partnerships with PC manufacturers, but also via retail channel. You've probably seen the product at PC World among other uh, this year, and also through our online store. So in version 12, Power DVD really reaches a new stage about really becoming a universal media player. It still bears the name DVD, which some would say, yeah, but DVD is only one thing it does. I agree with you. But it's, it's been such a successful product that, you know, although I'm head of marketing so far, I, I've had a hard time convincing our founders that maybe we should expand the name. So for the time being, it's Power DVD. But what you'll find is quite, uh, quite exceptional in this product. I mean, when, what we've done is that we try to simplify dramatically the experience for users. I mean, over the several, uh, few, uh, several uh, versions in the past, uh, we added more and more features, more and more capabilities. Uh, the product was, uh, to our own uh, view, getting a little bit cluttered. So what we did for version 12, we said, let's simplify as much as possible the user experience of this product. We have a few things. Of course, there's user interface improvements, and Volker will show some of them to you. But also, uh, we made it a real universal media player. So think of any file format that is used by more than a few uh, hundred people in the world. Chances are that it will play natively. So we added, for example, the ability to read raw formats for pictures directly. So you can put a SD card directly into the computer, play it with the player. Same thing with... Uh, uh, some of the high definition formats, MKV, MK3, all the, they're all added, and Volker will go into the details. So basically, any kind of format is going to play. Other thing we did also is, in terms of the ability to play any format in high definition, or bring it from 2D to 3D. We said, if you want it to be a true universal media player, means that users, if, they should always have the choice of the best experience in their view, be it high definition or 3D. So you'll see, no matter what type of content, you can always do uh, the uh, improvement the way you like. So that's one big part. The other part also is that we expanded the experience beyond the PC. So you, you see an iPad, there's some Android devices here, there's different devices. So what we will show you is that we expanded the experience to span all platforms, literally. Uh, not only to play the content, but to exchange content, stream content, synchronize, etc. So creating, in a way, a home network without having to do anything. So it's also something quite exceptional. Also, you have the best experience uh, and when, about HD 3D. One thing that we do have is, you'll see, unfortunately, we cannot show it to you on the, the, the big screen here because of limitations, but after the demo, I invite each of you to absolutely come at the back of the room and see for the first time in your life a uh, 2D Blu-ray movie upscaled to 3D in a quality that uh, you will be, you'll believe it comes directly from the studio. I mean, our algorithms are fantastic. And this is something really unique. When you think that you know, only a few titles are released every year by Hollywood studios in 3D and most of them are family or children's oriented content. Mm. So now you could take your entire Blu-ray collection and enjoy it in 3D. It's quite exceptional. <coughs> Finally, we fully integrated social media sites, especially with uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we do things that you cannot do anywhere else. For example, in Facebook, you'll be able to see all the albums of all your friends in one screen with all their pictures. You'll be able to download batches of photos at once. Uh, YouTube, you'll be able to upscale any content in HD 3D. So that's what we're talking about. So without more ado, I will let uh, Volker Take over. Again, please reserve your questions for the end of the Power DVD uh, demo, and then we'll move on. Thanks. Okay, so I think most of you are familiar with the previous version, so let me jump in what's new for version 12. Um, so instantly you see that we optimize the user interface. On the left side you see a explorer bar, uh, which is really necessary because, as Richard mentioned, um, we are connecting and working with a lot of uh, mobile devices now. So, <clears throat> of course, um, for the media library here on the left top, um, you can access your drive, you can access your videos, your personal video library. And let me highlight um, that we also optimize the play by at the bottom. So um, here, for example, you can very quickly specify the thumbnail size. Or, um, even if I go into the video and play back some video, <clears throat> 
I can jump very quickly uh, to some bookmarks I set. And um, the nice thing here is I'm able also not only to specify the size. Of course, no other animal their size is such a large and well-developed group. Not even your favorite. But I can also zoom, which means um, I can zoom inside the picture here by, by using this rectangle. Or I can, of course, use the slider to make this rectangle bigger or smaller. So you can zoom into the details, like, for example, the dogs, how relaxed they are with the dolphins here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I see. This was convincing for you. Yeah. Also, it's very good, uh, you know, when a player, you're not sure if they kick the other player in the leg in a football game like it happened uh, recently, I believe. Uh, it's a very good way to see it. And again, it's super simple. I was talking about simplifying the user interface. You see there's no menu. You have a, like a few buttons at the bottom. The zoom is one of these examples. Whatever you have on the screen, you can zoom in, zoom out. Whether it's a menu, whether you're viewing a video, a picture, etc. So that's what we talked about when it's simplified. <coughs> Okay, let's go to the photos. <clears throat> well, as mentioned, also here, depending on how many photos you have, you can uh, modify the thumbnail size. But one new thing is also that you can have access to your photos, which means uh, once you uh, roll over with the mouse over the folder, uh, we have a slider appearing, and um, you can very quickly browse with the slider through the photos in the folder, which means um, it's very quick for you to find a specific trip uh, like um, checking if this was um, the visit at the market, for example, or um, the visit in the city is in the next folder. <coughs> For the music, well, the same, I mean, depending on how many albums you have in your library, it's very important that you can resize it and have a complete overview about your music library. Okay, next part is of course on the computer itself, um, so you can access your drives, um, CD, DVD, Blu-ray drives, also local drives, or drives you mounted uh, from your NAS um, to, to playback files um, or directly disks. Well, <clears throat> a new tab is uh, devices. So um, for the devices, um, actually what you see is that um, of course we have the power DVD remote, like in uh, version 11, so you can remote control your PC um, from a phone or a, a tablet um, using Android or iOS. <coughs> a new thing is, I connected an Android tablet here, a Sony tablet, and this is the Sony tablet you can see here. So which means, once you connect via USB cable um, the Android devices, they will be listed, we are recognize the device, and by that, we know the optimum profile for the device. So first thing what we can do is, of course, we can access the content on the device, which is quite interesting because we can drag and drop, copy, vice versa. Um, for example, if you made some photos while you were traveling with the device, you can access the photos and very easily access the photos and copy them back to your photo library, which is really, really difficult in other solutions. Um, Another thing is, if you go on the device tab, you see um, the videos, <coughs> photos, and music tabs up there. So behind that, you see that we can synchronize um, your local music, photo, or video library with Android devices. So I would say it's an iTunes-like solution for Android devices. <clears throat> iTunes-like, because I think we are better than iTunes. So one thing what we can do is, um, of course, you can mark certain albums uh, and then press synchronize, and we will synchronize and copy the files to the device. Um, this is very important because the storage capacity of these devices is limited, and you cannot copy all your videos and all your music uh, in one step to your device. So you always have to select. Um, so we offer certain rules like um, all music, uh, music you recently bought, um, mu music you uh, frequently listen to, but of course, I mean, not necessarily you need to follow the rules, you also can just take an album and drag and drop it to the device. So in that case, of course, we will directly start the synchronization process and copy just this one album. So this is also a nice thing, and there you see that this explorer bar on the left side is really, really important. <coughs> Let me highlight that on the PC, uh, you have lots of different file formats, and that's why people love the PC, because you can playback all these different file formats. 
So um, let's go to the videos, which is uh, certainly more challenging than the audio itself. So <clears throat> for the videos, for example, probably you see some MKV files. And for the MKV files, you also can drag and drop them just to the device. So in that case, of course, we are not just doing a simple copy process because <clears throat> it's useless. The Android devices currently, they cannot play back MKV files because the MKV is a container format. It can contain up to um, HD quality video with DTS HD sound. So what we are doing is, with the help of the PC and the CPU power, we are transcoding the file and then synchronize it. And therefore, of course, it's very important that we detect the device so we know the optimum profile of the device. So um, <clears throat> at the next day when you uh, disconnect the device, then of course uh, you can watch this video in a full quality while you're traveling. Okay. Another thing we implemented is a music store actually. So we are, uh, we are partnering with a company together called 7Digital. Um, it's really a big player. Uh, they are very, very active in Europe uh, as well as in the US. And um, they have uh, contracts with all the major labels. Uh, their portfolio is about 17 million songs, and um, they are delivering DRM uh, uh, copy-free music, uh, MP3s, in a very high quality, uh, which is uh, 320 uh, uh, kilobytes. So um, you can see it's a fully integrated solution. On the right side, you can see instantly the albums they offer. I mean, you can go to the top charts of the albums or the top songs. <clears throat> and let me highlight, of course, I mean, once you do it, uh, you will see the prices, of course, pop up in pounds, but we're using our accounts, and they are based on euros. So it's very easy. You can just click a song um, and buy it, and it will be automatically transferred into your music library. And by that, it's very easy to synchronize with your Android devices then. Next thing is home media. <clears throat> so you see, once we click on home media, we are scanning the network and finding all DLNA devices. And um, this means um, <clears throat> by installing PowerDVD 12, uh, PowerDVD 12 is a digital media server. So which means at least you have your first digital media server in the network. And then you can access this digital media server with your mobile apps. Which mobile apps? So we're delivering with PowerDVD 12 Ultra um, an app called PowerDVD Mobile version 4, which is available not only for Android, but also now for iOS. And I think we should show you this, <coughs> this app now. We will use this screen for that. OK. <coughs> so you can see um, we have two apps here, uh, PowerDVD Remote. You already know it from version 11. But let's start the PowerDVD Mobile on the left side. So for PowerDVD Mobile, of course, uh, you have four modules, a music, a video, a photo, and a camera module. So <clears throat> let's enter the music module. You can see you can browse your local albums here. And um, of course, start a local playback. So if you click into an album, you get all the songs, and you easily can start a local playback of one of the songs. There are also different views available, so you can, while you while you're playing, you can browse through your albums or <clears throat> through the different tracks. Well, <clears throat> I think um, that's something you expect from a local player. Um, let us go directly to something more interesting uh, and go to the video module. So for the video module, of course, um, you see the local content which is on the device. Um, and of course, as for the music, you can start the local playback. But let's go to home media. And while Michael does that, uh, you know, I'm doing the same here with a iPad. So whether it's uh, Android or iOS, it's the exact same user interface, exact same things. Mm -hmm. So here you can see we instantly find all the DLNA devices on the network. And let's go to the demo notebook. And um, it's requesting the files from the demo no notebook. So here you can see all the different files um, <clears throat> on this notebook here. And you can see actually there are lots of file formats which you normally cannot play back on the tablet. 
So let's go to the MKV trailer of Hanna and let's start the playback. So what's happening now is uh, we are requesting the file from the DLNA server which comes with PowerDVD 12 and then streaming the file to the tablet. But of course we are doing the transcoding first which means we transcode the MKV to a file format which is playable on the tablet device in real time. So let us call up the play bar at the bottom. Okay, uh, you have to click it once again. Are you transcoding or just changing the, the uh, container format? No, no, we are really transcoding because um, these devices we are using currently are just 720p, whereas this trailer is full HD resolution. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. So you're transcoding it down to 720p yeah. in real time? Well, probably we will soon first our devices which have HD capability. In that case, <coughs> you could also play back in HD quality. So um, I think it's really interesting to use the PC to do this transcoding depending on the connected device. And you won't transcode if it's not necessary? Right. right. Unlike Windows Phone 7 connector, right. which will, will transcode whatever. <laughs> Yes, that's true, and um, probably we can we can just show it here. <coughs> you have the play bar control, and there's also an HQ button. So with the help of the PC, we are also able to upscale. So 720p um, is a format which is above DVD formats back. So which means if you are playing DVD <coughs> content, you could press the HQ button, and then the PC will even help to upscale the material before transmitting. Okay. Let us show <coughs> more functions and features of the DLNA. So let me highlight first also that the DLNA is not only limited on PC or PC-like uh, devices. Uh, no, no, it's also a standard widely supported at the CE side. So which means you can interact not only with the PC or tablets or phones, but also with CE devices like TV sets or digital media renderers. Can you handle subtitles? Um, no, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. So again, we have the overview, and we take a video, and then we click on it a little bit longer, and then you can see the bar down here, which offers more options. Let me <clears throat> highlight the first one. I mean, just imagine you made yourself comfortable on the sofa in the evening, and um, you see that, or <clears throat> you, you recognize that on the next day you will be traveling, and you have a lot of time in the train or plane. So probably you want to save some of the files which are actually on your, on your, <clears throat> on your NAS or your PC, so you can press <coughs> save. And once we press save, you see icon up there on the top, uh, which we clicked, and then you see the downloading process. But downloading does not only mean the copy process. Again, we do the transcoding, so which means um, later, once the process is finished, you have the optimum quality for the later playback on the next day. And while, once you consume the file, you can delete it, so there's no need for a real full synchronization every time. So often it's just more convenient to select one file or one album copy it quickly, listen or watch it the next day, and then delete it from the device, because, as I said, the storage capacity is limited. Do you okay. have the option for two-pass encoding? <coughs> um, no, not yet. I mean, um, <clears throat> this is something which would happen on the PC side, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's click again on one of the files. And let me highlight that, was that we also have a play to button. So pressing the play to button, actually, <coughs> we instantly see all the digital media renderers in the network. This could be, of course, Power DVD itself. It could also be um, a TV set or a set top box. So um, we can choose the demo notebook from our side. <coughs> and in that case, you will see on my notebook, there's a message popping up and ask, if I would accept the content, well, I could be working on the notebook and I say, no, 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 I don't want that. But I can also say, never ask me again. And in that case, the content will instantly play back. So actually what we're doing is we are reading a file from a PC on the 
on the back and streaming it right to the notebook here in the front. 